Hi and welcome to my channel. Now in today's video I'll be uh, repairing this Pioneer. It's just got an hissing sound on one of the channels. On the left channel is this kind of hissing sound. It's not crackling or popping like some of my previous videos. This one's an hissing sound so uh, it's more apparent when you've got the headphones on, when you've got you know speakers plugged in normally. You have to get up a, a reasonably close to the speaker to hear it but it is there and it's there when you've got it on the volume on zero. It's completely zeroed out the volume and you may have on auxiliary or CD or tune or something like that but there's nothing planned, you know, nothing planned, it's, it's, it's right down low the volume on zero but you can still hear that hissing sound come through like I say it's more apparent, get the old headphones on you're going to hear it a lot more apparent. So let's just give you a little listen, I've recorded it onto my little recorder, it's on the left channel and this is what it sounds like. Okay so there it is and like I say this is only really apparent on headphones, it does show up a little bit on the speakers but you have to get a reason a, a few feet away once you start panning back you can't hear it but it's something that's probably only going to get worse over time it's going to be a bit irritating especially if you're listening to the headphones if you've got a quiet track because once you put the volume on one and start moving up with that that sound disappears but it's always going to be in the background it's always kind of going to get in the way of the music you want a nice clear sound and that's going to kind of slightly interfere with it and it's probably like say something that's only going to get worse over time so if we can get rid of that that's going to be great so to do on this particular receiver, I'm not going to show you me taking all this apart and everything else. There's no need to really, because you're if you've come here to try and maybe suss out how to mend your amplifier, get some kind of idea, then yours going to be totally different. But taking these apart, it's usually a couple of screws each side, maybe a screw or two at the back, and the lid's normally going to come off. And if you want to get the under panel, it's probably got about eight screws down below, and the under panel will come off. But uh, if you're going to attempt this repair yourself, be very careful, because obviously you can get electric shocks, all that kind of stuff off of these units. Uh, and we're, I want to show you this one, I'm not actually going to show you a video, I'm showing you a couple of pictures of me doing it and a little sound test kind of thing of what's happening. Uh, this was live, this was on when he did it because I'm actually using this spray here, this is like a coolant spray. It's, um, it's, 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 it's a thingy, but what do you call it, um, a coolant as well as a duster. Let's get it out, and this is quite a big tin. You can get them a lot smaller than this. I think they do them over here in the UK in the pound shops, little air duster things. Uh, one minute you can try to get all the dust out of your receiver or amplifier or something like that or whether you clean your keyboard but if you turn it upside down and spray it then it, cut, it flows out cool in a really cold air kind of thing to freeze stuff with etc so what I'm going to do today I'm going to actually use this rather than just taking out the transistors or any other test I haven't got an oscilloscope or anything like that this is really for late you know someone's got hardly anything in their toolbox uh, just maybe a can of this and that's it and they're hoping to uh, kind of find out what part's gone wrong. Now, it's on the left channel and I suspect it to be a transistor, like a leaky transistor, something like that. This is what I'm suspecting. So I've done a few tests before of actually kind of trying to diagnose what's happening. The first test I did was to find out if it's happening just on the phono stage, right? So we, we flip this over to phono, your record input, your turntable input, obviously nothing plugged into it. Put your old headphones on, add the volume on zero. Is the noise there? And it was, the noise was there. So then we flick over to tuner and auxiliary, exactly the same, is the noise there? And on all three inputs on this, the noise was there. So that's telling me that it ain't just a phono, it's all three of them. If it was just there when the phono stage, you know, when I put it flicked over to phono, if the noise was there, when I put it to auxiliary, it disappeared. When I put it to tuner, it disappeared. Then we know that it's the phono stage causing the problem. But as it was on all inputs, we know it's not the phono stage. It could still be a slight bit of noise in the phono stage after we rectify this fault. We'll come to that maybe like another day if it is the case. But um, so we know it's not that. So we're going to eliminate the phono stage. And like I say, I'm going to take the top off. Be very careful if you're going to do this because I'm going to spray this with the unit plugged in. So if you're not very comfortable with doing that, then this isn't the video for you. Be very very careful because this will be plugged in it will be plugged into 240 volts i know where the 240 volts is going to be on this circuit you're talking with a metal can as well you're going to start plonking this inside can quite easily drop it drop a screw drop drop anything in it catch it you accidentally touch something inside so you've got to be very very careful so be very careful with that but if you're happy enough you're going to concentrate you're going to take your time then something you may want to do but be very careful make sure you've got no distractions etc because there can be some lethal parts inside of these just want to make sure that i'm probably going over the top but i just want to make sure it's clear you know what i mean if you do attempt it yourself if you don't feel comfortable with that then leave it to someone else to mend maybe or another suggestion is also if you didn't want to start spraying all this stuff inside and all that 
it's just to go through the transistors in there anyway to start off as I do towards the left hand side of the circuit as it builds up to the main output start off the left hand side and just replace each transistor there's six transistors in there they're not expensive to buy just do one at a time and hopefully you may cure it a bit um, how could you say a bit of a lucky dip maybe but uh, that's another way of doing it I mean once you repair if you repair it that way it doesn't matter if you had a lucky dip so what you still repaired it and you've got six new transistors in that circuit so it ain't the end of the world kind of thing but uh, we're going to try and narrow it down to just the one transistor like I say using this spray so let's let me show you exactly what I did Okay, so I've downloaded the circuit diagram and here it is on the screen now showing the left and right channel. Now we know it's not the phono stage as discussed earlier, so we're going to skip on now to the main part of the amplifier. Uh, moving towards the right is more where the power amplifier power transistors are and towards the left is where the lower power transistors are, uh, so to speak. So um, let's have a look at the suspect transistors here on the left hand channel because it's only the left hand channel. So these will be the transistors shown in the yellow arrows. It could quite easily be one of these. So we're going to start with transistor Q5, which is transistor 5. So there it is, Q5 transistor 5. Uh, and with downloading this circuit diagram, it also come with a, a diagram of where this transistor is on the main board. And that's where it is there, Q5. Just take a closer look. Now, you may be lucky enough to get the uh, board diagram as well. If you don't, it means you're just going to hunt around the board looking for Q5 or TR5 or T5, something like that to give you an indication of where that transistor is. And once you found that transistor, just give it a little spray, and I did so, and absolutely no difference at all. There was, there was no difference in the sound at all, just spraying that transistor. So uh, for the time being, I'm going to say that transistor is okay, and we're going to move on to the next transistor in the circuit, and that is Q7, transistor 7. There it is on the main board, labelled up Q7 there. So what I did, I actually spray. let's just uh, show you the actual picture of it on the top of the board there. There it is uh, with all the other parts all around it there on the board. And I'm just going to put my straw in, like so. Sorry, it's a bit of a, a blurry picture, but just put my straw in. Uh, like I said, you can put some dampening around. You can put a bit of tissue. You could actually um, put a bit of uh, paper or cardboard around that just to isolate it a little bit more. But you can just put the straw in like I did. It's up to you. One quick spurt. I haven't got a video of that, uh, but I did make a recording of when I actually did it, etc. I just thought it may be easier just to show you a picture and tell you exactly when... I did the spray and you'll hear the difference that made so let's just pay you a video now so you're going to see a still picture it's going to come up on the picture when I spray you're going to hear the difference anyway uh, so let's listen to that Okay, so that's quite apparent as soon as I did that spraying it kind of really made a bad noise uh, I don't know what it was uh, then kind of settled down a bit but you could hear the noise uh, it was amplified it was it was a bit of a difference I think it went up about five or six DB after spraying to what it did before spraying so I've whipped that transistor out as you can see there it is on the left the 2SC 14 sorry 1344 and that's with a little lot like a little ridge on the top facing up and the legs are uh, emitter, collector and base in that order. And there's my replacement transistor on the right, a 2SC1845. I've kind of got it flat side up. So it matches emitter, collector, base. So all the three pins match exactly the same as the other transistor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to poke it in the hole now that I've uh, already took the other transistor out. So uh, poking the new transistor through them holes and soldering them in place. As you can see, there it is in place. And if you look carefully there on the board as well, you can actually see where it's labelled up. B for base, E for emitter, C for collector. So, you, you know, you should be able to get it in the right order. But so double, double check it. Make sure when you took the other one out, it was labelled up correctly as well. Because some of these markings can sometimes be wrong. Just be a little bit careful. Uh, but uh, you should be okay. Uh, just take a note of how you took the other one out. And uh, how it looks in the picture I just showed you earlier. Or, you know, how it compares with other pictures you find online. To how you took it out, where the base collector and emitter was. And find out where the base collector and emitter is on your transistor. And put it back in the you know, correct order where the base should be, the emitter should be, and the collector should be, and you should be fine. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play you back me spraying that transistor again. Then I'm going to play you straight after it, how it sounds after I replace this transistor. So you can hear the two differences against each other to give you more of an idea of what kind of sound difference it did make. So let's just listen to this video once again, and with this uh, new transistor in towards the end of the video.
that's it mending now as you hopefully you can hear the difference with the before and the after that hissing noise has gone now now while doing that spray some people may like to get a bit of card or something like that and roll it up something like this it's just a bit bigger than what it should be just to give you an idea and uh, you've got your transistor poking out the circuit board like that put the card over it so it pretty much covers it and coming from the top with your straw that saves all this spray going all over the place and everywhere and it just concentrates on that particular transistor don't start spraying other parts that you know that spray could get onto another part it could be the other part and you change that transistor and it wasn't that it was one of the other parts this spray has managed to jump onto kind of thing so some people like doing that you may want to put a bit of tissue or something in there so this when this sprays it does give out some kind of liquid as well and it can spread around the circuit board a little bit not far but it can spread around a little bit you may just want to put a bit of tissue or something near the uh, transistor legs or something like that so when you spray it this spray doesn't go everywhere so that's a couple more tips like i say if you don't feel comfortable doing this you know it could be like it, you know these kind of like noises are, are quite you know transistors i am the it's the odds on favorite so to speak of being the culprit so you may just want to go along on that left channel and change each transistor as you go along and you know forget about this spray altogether but so just showing you me using this spray it did in this particular occasion flag up this transistor after further testing the phono stage was fine and it was making no noise at all so this is pretty much done the only other thing to do really now is to uh, maybe swap out the other transistor on the other channel where this one is to match them up a little bit so these two channels are a little bit more matched up because there may be a bit more gain on this particular transistor than there is in the old transistor on the other channel and going further than that is we'll be placing all them transistors maybe along that line or some more of this particular one the 2SC1344 as they may prone to start leaking and making noise a bit later on and changing the capacitors as well in this particular unit and I've gone out and bought every single part I need now for this unit to do that uh, so that's going to be another video in a, in a while's time because I've got quite a few things to do still but in a while's time I will come back to this and actually do a before and after sound test if I can hopefully get that sound test sorted out a way of showing you or so you can hear the difference between this being uh, you know sounding like it was before it was recapped and a few transistors replaced to afterwards hopefully I can find a way of doing that so you can hear the difference um, Okay, that's it. So uh, once again, be careful when not undoing any of these units and hopefully you got something out of this video. Until the next one, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.